pleasant afternoon and a warm welcome to one and all present here. This is Dr. Maheshwari, Head, Department of Mathematics. On behalf of Kumaruguru Institutions, Department of Mathematics is happy in inviting you all for the five-day short-term training program in modern mathematical tools for calculus and analytics. The development of optimization techniques has parallel advances, not only in computer science, but, uh, but also in operations research, numerical analysis, game theory, mathematical economics, control theory, and combinatorics. Optimization is also a mathematical programming, which is a collection of mathematical principles and methods used for solving quantitative problems in many disciplines, including physics, biology, engineering, and business. This optimization, along with MATLAB programming, plays a vital role in today's world. Here's an opportunity for all of us to explore these concepts by listening to the talk given by our dear speaker. For our first day short-term training program, we have our dear speaker, Dr. C. Vijayalakshmi, Associate Professor, Department of Statistics and Applied Mathematics, Central University of Tamil Nadu, Tiruvarur. Dr. C. Vijayalakshmi is a prominent person from Central University of Tamil Nadu with more than 25 years of teaching and research experience. She is a turnaround expert, a reviewer of Journal of Computational and Applied Mathematics, International Journal of Business Information Systems, and also a guest editor of International Journal of Business Information Systems, International Journal of Computer Aided Engineering and Technology. She has been recognized with various state level and national level awards for the kind of achievements that she has made in teaching and research. Her areas of research are machine learning algorithms, optimization techniques, fuzzy optimization, statistics, stochastic process, fuzzy optimization, etc. She has guided 15 PhDs and is also the mentor for various industrial projects. She is an active academic visitor to various countries and was a principal investigator of the various funded projects. She is a renowned author of multiple books on probability, statistics, engineering, mathematics, etc. She has published a numerous research papers in reputed national and international, international journals. Even before handing over the session to the speaker, there are certain instructions to be followed by our dear participants. If you have any questions during the presentation, please pose them into the Q&A tab in your Zoom control panel. It will be answered at the end of the session. The feedback and the e-assessment link will be posted in the chat box. All the participants who fill the feedback and the e-assessment link for all the five days will be given the e-certificates. Now, I request you to take over the session, madam, and give a brief insight of optimization and the MATLAB programming in today's session. Over to you, madam. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Maggie Shuri, ma'am. Respected higher authorities of KCT, principal sir, science and humanities head, and the coordinators of five-day national level short-term training program, STTP on modern mathematical tools for calculus and analytics, Dr. Mahesh Shuri ma'am, and Dr. Anita ma'am, and my dear participants. Arise awake and stop not till the goal is reached by Swami Vivekananda. I would like to express my thanks to all participants also in this regard. So to start with, I wish to give some introduction to MATLA. Myself, Vijayalakshmi from Central University of Tamil Nadu. MATLA. What are the uses of MATLA? toolboxes in MATLAB and how to start the MATLAB program. Do we have a desktop in MATLAB? Do we have an editor, M files, thrip files, and matrix manipulation? Any types of engineering applications or real-time applications could be solved by using MATLAB. And this is a beautiful tool, I can say, like, and it's a beautiful language to be thrown out. So MATLAB, how it has been organized? It is matrix laboratory. Where do we use this? Numerical computations with matrices, 
every number can be represented in terms of matrix any higher order differential equations or a partial differential equations can be solved by matlab of any order i mean so why why do we use matlab this is a user friendly gui and easy to work and powerful tool and in this it is it a language or a package it is a computer language and effectively it can be used by solving the complex mathematical problems and design of mathematical models and nowadays people have started using it for healthcare and genetics and it can be accomplished in few lines it is a built in matrix and we use vector operations and this is available in different types of platforms ms windows unix that is linux or it can be in personal computer and other operating systems also it's a high performance numeric computation and visualization software very very important point is however we do it visualization becomes complicated so a three dimensional visualization of a contour integration in mathematics can be viewed which help all engineering disciplines to make them to analyze the solution in a very easy way so what are the uses math and computation algorithm development modeling simulation prototype data analysis and exploration visualize it in different model and scientific and engineering graphics and especially gui and toolbox different types of toolboxes are available based on our domain or the research area we will be in a position to use that toolbox some of the things have been displayed over here aerospace toolbox image processing toolbox optimization toolbox signal processing toolbox and wavelet toolbox madam is the slide visible okay to start with this matlab program it depends on the platforms so we could see it as a computer like start go inside matlab then the latest version now the latest version is 2020b so activate deactivate and matlab you can enter it into it and i have used a version of matlab 2008b so from the ms dos window we can just directly by using the cd to the directory in which you want to start matlab that is also possible on other platforms like unix that is also possible so i have shown a small intro over here how to enter all programs go inside programs then matlab then the version and the old version i have put it now the new version is 2020 and one activate will be there deactivate will be there these are the different types of windows which can be seen one minute we open this that is a current directory we could see what are the different files and folders we are accessing will be shown over here the command window if you want to write two lines say for example a equal to 2 b equal to 3 then addition of these two numbers can be done in the command window say c equal to a plus b then it is understood the solution can be seen in the command window but we want to write sequence of instructions more than 10 lines then we have to type edit go to the editor window then type the sequence of instructions over there save the file the extension of the matlab file is m and after saving the file we can just run it you will have one triangular symbol on the top of the matlab window right so this is to open a new file go to file new m file there are two different types of files script file and function file when we just do this and even we can type edit the word edit in the command window as a beautiful editor window will be opened we can type all the coding over here then go to file there you will have save as save the file in terms of dot m and see how to save it i have typed all the codings over here and outside the matlab we have to create a new folder save the file as these are the files which i have saved it and after saving it when you go to debug there we could see run this is one option of running the program other option is we could see one green color button on the top if you find any errors in the coding part after running it then it will be displayed in the command window so another window will open if we want to plot anything in the sequence of instructions if you have written plot easy plot plot of some x comma y with respect to range then 
it will a new window will pop up in that new window we call it as a figure window that is separate so when we click this command window we could see the numerical results over there but on the other hand we could see a figure window now i'm showing you all the different types of windows over here first workspace next one launchpad this is not there now current directory what are the files we are using it now next command window command window it will show the output then command history command history will tell us like at what time we have opened the program and what what are the things we have done it how it has been executed like that a beautiful history will be there in the command history and this is desktop in matlab first time when we start this matlab it will just appear in a default layout so you want to have the arrangement based on our convenience whether to resize it or move it or choose the tools now as i already showed you uh, professors four different types of desktop first one is current directory command window workspace command history and current directory what is the need of this current directory is this help us to find out it is a startup directory that is a quick way to find out the path of the current thing or change it to some other directory in order to access a particular file and this is also known as present working directory command history what are the statements we have used it recently in our command window or in the editor window will be stored immediately in the command history it will just tell us about the time stamp also at the same time when we run something and evaluate a particular set of coding over there like by using the editor window that will also be stored over there the third one is workspace this consists of set of variables which built in a session using matlab software where it will be stored it will be stored in the memory okay and this variables and how it is used as like in other programming c or c++ the main function will be there we will have a subroutine function in the main the subroutine function will be written and it will be stored as two the main function whenever we use the same name of the subroutine and call that immediately it will come to the main function and it will be done here also we have a function file so variables whatever to be added while running the m files that will be also stored in the workspace another thing is variables either we want to delete it or add it everything can be done by what command clear clear c l e a r if you have typed so many things and so many errors have come in our command window then simply if you type c l c automatically all the things will be deleted so every time we used to keep the command window in a clean manner to see the output of each and every program at the same time if we give who that command if we give it then what are the variables we are used in our program we can have n number of variables all those variables it can be shown we move sorry we move on to the next part like where you have close we can close the figure window at the same time we want to save that that figure alone we can save it and we can just put it in our article also clf or clears the figure window and clear x y g automatically it removes all the variables which have been used by us inside which is going to be a symbolic one and who is already told and this is command window workspace and command history and in workspace we could see that what type of class we have used it with respect to the value or the name it can be either double or it can be a character etc and in the workspace also we could see like what type of output file we had it and what type of history of all those things next one is command window when we talk about it this is where as already discussed by myself that is if we have two or three lines we can write it say for example by using arithmetic operators multiplication addition of two numbers subtraction of two numbers all this small small coding can be written in the command window and when we execute it or run it then the output will be shown in the command window itself but a sequence of large instructions a very big program has to be done only in the editor window 
an editor. As I said, now this will make us to write the line by line, and when we execute it, it will show us which line has an error. Say, for example, if I have 15 lines and line number nine, if I have a problem, then in the command window, instead of showing the output, it will just show like line number nine has some error in red color. It will be just thrown out, and this will help us. to debug all the errors of the programming language i have written the m files m files play a vital role and this is always to be started with an alphabetic character and it has an extension of dot and these are all ascii text files which can be you can view it using notepad and two different types of m files are there one is script m file another one is function m file the script m file is the direct commands we give it but this function m file is like a subroutine program where a specific task can be done and we can have n number of function m files and script m file the main idea of the script m file is some blocks or sequence of instructions or the commands or the computations what we want to say for example i want to sort the numbers in ascending order i want to find the largest number so we can write all the coding in the editor window and save it outside the matlab uh, then uh, folder and we can run the program that is why this is called a script m file and this is mainly it can be operated on the existing data on the works that is in the workspace whatever we do it all the variables and the values will be stored and it will see they can create a new data if it is going to be like that so m files once again we can say some set of matlab statements to begin and anything if you don't want to say for example i want to find the largest of three numbers in practical lab notebook we used to write aim like that to identify in a single file itself i can have 10 codings so first program code if i type it percentage to find the largest of three numbers what is the meaning of this percentage that means when i run the program this will not be executed it is understood it is an instruction for the coding person to know what is that first code contain m files function m files will contain the set of output and along with the input variables where it is defined as set of inputs and all the inputs with respect to the function name what is being defined will be stored in the output and main thing is like whatever the name we are given it the same name has to be used in the main file also how to create a new file we can just go to file and say file new choose an empty file then we can save it then execute the m file once again either we can use it open file icon from the toolbar and press control o or we can run it in the command window also or we can use one green color button over there and what if we have a beautiful user friendly help in matlab which make us to understand what is there in each and everything suppose if you do not know what type of command or syntax to be used then we can use this basic mathematical operations what is being over here as usual addition now when i say c equal to a plus b then previous step i should say if i just simply run this particular line it will show an error because the system will not understand what is a what is b so let me give a equal to 6 b equal to 7 then get the value of c so automatically to throw the value of 6 plus 7 13 similarly we can go for subtraction multiplication very very important point is in division there are some set of rules over here this is going to be element wise div division then we say a dot slash b if you want to find out inverse also we use the same slash say a is one matrix okay and i want to find the inverse of that a so normally in some other things we can put i and b of that here when we give the input and use this this also will give us then element wise division on the backslash also it give us and these are the some other things what suppose if this also follows a hierarchy of the number of opening parentheses should be equal to the number of closing parentheses the innermost expression in the given thing have will be evaluated 
See, some of the examples are shown over here. X equal to 2 plus 3 dot 5. So we have to give the parenthesis, opening parenthesis and the closing parenthesis. Then anyway, we will get a result, but it may be a wrong result. Then double precision. Double precision is always like, see, we try to say it in C language, float, int, all those things. Like we try to give how many decimal places we need it. So here also, the double precision always it contains minimum of 15 digits. So if you want to see all the 15 digits, we give a format long. So the entire thing will be displayed over here. If it is going to be a short format, then we will give a short format. I want to have only four or five decimal places over here. And this is some missing operator, comma, semicolon, everything will take it. If it is not there, it will just give an error. So what is wrong in this particular expression? The right hand side closing parenthesis is missing. So that once again, when we, after we run a program, it will just tell us like something wrong in this particular line or column. And the generating vectors. Vectors plays a vital role in linear algebra, numerical, as well as in optimization techniques. So we want to create zeros for a given matrix, then the command is zeros. We want to create ones, then that is given over here. Randomly, how many numbers have to be generated for a given M cross N matrix. Then concatenation. We have different types of uh, things over here. Concatenation of two strings or concatenation of two matrices. Then subscription. Then the manipulations in matrix with all respect to powers, exponentials. Very, very important point is given a matrix of four by four, if somebody is asking us to find out the eigenvalue or eigenvector, it's very difficult to do it manually, but very small, simple command. If first thing is give the input of the matrix, A, A is a matrix. So after giving the input of the matrix, then simply fit and store it in some capital A. After doing that, if you simply give EIG of A, then it will throw all the eigenvalues of the three by three matrix. If it is going to be three by three matrix, three eigenvalues will be there. Maybe all eigenvalues may be equal or different or real and distinct, anything like that. So working with complex numbers and matrix manipulation as already discussed and system of linear equations. System of linear equations can be solved very fast over here. Normally, when AX equal to B means we say X equal to A inverse B. We try to solve system of linear equations either by Kramer's rule or by any type of numerical or Newton's method, et cetera, et cetera. Gauss, Seidel or iterative methods. But this MATLAB help us to find out the solution for the given system of linear equations. So how to enter a matrix? I given one matrix A, one, two, three, four, five, six. The order of the matrix is two by three. So how to enter? Open bracket, first row elements, one, two, three, separated by semicolon, go to the second row, four, five, six. This is the way how we enter it. And if we just run this, it will automatically show us the display the input matrix. To enter a matrix as such as just now, size of the matrix, it will tell you two cross three. So meaning of sizes, we try to say no, number of rows by number of columns. We want to see the particular element A of one comma two. So suppose I want to view that particular element that can be seen. Range, I can give it test. Want to have the numbers starting with zero to six with an increment of 0 0.1. And a EIG, we have a matrix over here. EIG of A, inverse of A, A transpose, A star A. So when we do all these things, all the things will be displayed in the command window. Lin space. Lin space is, this is very much important when we want to divide it into interval of so, small, small, small sub-intervals of the same length. Say, for example, 1 to 10, if I have it, I want to divide it to, with respect to 1, 2. The increment is one. If that is the case, we have to use the lin space of lower bound, comma upper bound. How many divisions we want that it will be done. So zeros and ones, we have already seen it. And this is array operations. We want to find out the trigonometry functions can be used directly. And the square root of each and every element can also be done. And when we use this inline command, this is array is very smart where we use a dot over here. That is, if you see, the function is x cubed plus x minus 1 at x is equal to 2. What is the meaning of this inline? Inline, inline creates 
a function of any number of variables by giving a string which contains a function followed by a series of strings that is called inline command and these are all how the column vector row vector and since what is the meaning of since it is trying to create a symbolic variable and with the command this looks like a local say suppose if we use uh, c language or something we say x integer int flow all those things like that next one is help already we have discussed and small small functions or expressions can be evaluated in a clear way and we can solve the symbolic equations also and the basic idea is how we can use the matrix by solving all the system of equations it can be either a linear one or a non linear one we find it difficult if it is going to be non linear one so we use the commands to solve it so when we have a function f we use the command solve of the function f comma with respect to what similarly to solve a differential equation we have a command d solve what is d solve differential equation solving so this is which can be defined as an m file and any help or documentation this is always be possible so i move on to the next thing which we have to think about the optimization hope i have given some idea about introduction to matlab now we move on to optimization techniques how can we solve a particular problem by using optimization technique with the help of matlab what type of role it plays actually so when we just talk about this i just wanted to tell one more thing before this how a matlab will look like and this is a matlab okay so after just opening the matlab file this is going to be my editor window and this is going to be my command window and this is file i want to open a new file i can open it here and this is the run command so all these things say for example i can just show one file over here i have designed a code for uh, jacobian and plotting it so similarly different types of codes will be here so when we just plot it we have to type all the instructions in the editor window and run it when we run it you could see in the left extreme one busy busy it will be coming what is the meaning of busy busy means it is just trying to do what now you could see how beautifully the graph is drawn yes so it will show you like what is this blue color what is this red color so a beautiful interpretation to decide about the column vector is shown over here okay maybe i will show you the figure window also the figure window is has it been shown if not once again i will uh, show the figure window the figure window is so after running the program the figure will be displayed like this so for a particular function we are trying to find out the jacobian matrix and we are doing the easy plot and this is matlab now i go back to my optimization so optimization techniques by using matlab right what is optimization optimization is a mathematical discipline which is concerned with finding the maxima minima of function subject to n number of constraints this is the base which has been taken from the calculus so calculus is the base of this and this help us even if the non linear function which is of higher degree we will be in a position to solve it and get the values and where do we do we use this optimization it is used in architecture nutrition electrical circuits economics and transportation what are the applications of optimization we could see that see the two different uh, pictures i have just displayed it over here the first one is baseline aircraft and uh, it is solar radiation up to 350 w bar m square if we implement the optimization techniques over here the optimized aircraft on the right side shows that the solar radiation is only up to 150 w bar m square and down we could see two different types of flights over here 
one is with respect to exterior temperature another one is a maximum exterior both the parametric variables have to be optimized it. so what is our objective the objective is to design aircraft with minimum weight now another application related to engineering mechanical engineering has been shown over here the optimized system configuration whenever we talk about the optimized system configuration either we can have a single objective or we can have multiple number of objectives when we talk about the single objective the overall drive train efficiency and the power requirement energy used and cost of energy and power loss all these parameters have been taken care now when we see this first one is the standard system which has been taken the second one is optimized system efficiency that means blindly when we see these two pictures we could see that little bit of diagram is missing but that is not the case the main idea is by having this optimized parameters such as efficiency power required from utility energy and cost of energy we could see that the system is being optimized now we could see another picture civil engineering discipline where we can have this maximum efficiency at the same time minimum cost we do use this optimization in real time manufacturing industries and production industries production planning control inventory basic what is the basic thing the necessary and sufficient conditions to obtain the minima and maxima so in the classes how it has been taught the same way the necessary condition and the sufficient conditions with respect to the rate of change of a particular variable either to be the necessary condition to be the first order derivative and the sufficient condition to be the nth order based on the function so for obtaining minima it is given over here for obtaining maxima it is given over here in both the cases we try to check whether the highest derivative d square y by dx square or d power n y by dx power n whether it is greater than 0 or less than 0 based on that we try to say this function attains the maxima or minima at this particular point what is optimization what is the root over here the basic root of optimization is always with respect to two classification one is continuous another one is discrete when we talk about the continuous it is with respect to constraint and unconstrained when it is discrete we have integer programming and it is also connected with stochastic where stochastic always talks time to be the translation of the parameter and in unconstrained we can have non linear equations with respect to global and non differentiable when we talk about constraint it deals with stochastic network bound and non linearity and linear programming constraint optimization plays a vital role in all real time applications and when we talk about system optimization what are the different types of mathematical programming and what are the different types of algorithms and modeling and applications they have been displayed over here what are the different types of optimization unconstrained optimization today's session let us talk about unconstrained optimization constrained optimization and constrained optimization through gradients and the third type constrained optimization through gradients try to give the optimal fit or the best fit value for the given problem so a small example of unconstrained optimization and the different methods available now powell method it's a quadratic degree to where the objective function polynomial will be a non gradient based gradient based is the steepest descent and least square minimum value in which the error has to be minimized hessian based hessian based is a very good program that is under unconstrained optimization and when we take the conjugate gradient it is trying to give the accurate value at to some set of decimal places a small example for unconstrained optimization i want to build the largest water tank in my hometown is one problem the second problem is the fastest route to a mall where i reach now we move on to constrained optimization so far we have seen the unconstrained now we are going for constrained indirect approach what is indirect approach we try to transform this into an unconstrained problem but there will be so many problems with respect to the constraints we have to be 
we have to take it the second method is exterior penalty function and argumental lagrangian argumental lagrangian multiplier and this method plays a vital role in all power distribution and power generation in current scenario direct method sequential linear programming slp sqp and steepest generalized reduced gradient method which has been used in all biological applications and healthcare also what is constraint optimization we have seen the different types of constraint optimization methods now what is constraint the function is to optimize either to maximize or minimize the restrictions are called as constraints and individuals maximizing utility that will be subject to the budget constraint and example any industry or firms or organization maximizing the output will always be interlinked with the cost constraint one example to know the difference between unconstrained and constrained design the same example i am extending it design the largest water tank using not more than 1 kg of steel now here i am posting this looks like a conditional probability yes p of a by b equal to p of a intersection b by p of b right okay the same way like a small example here where what is the restriction over here or what is the condition given not more than 1 kg of steel so my constraint will be less than or equal to 1 kg next one the fastest route to a mall it was the previous example through a temple now i should be in a position to use some scheduling and sequencing algorithm in order to find out the shortest path or fastest route why to optimize what are the real time applications where we have it say the straight forward will be fuel time power effort more complexity will be with respect to margin and if uncertainties are involved how are we going to resolve the problem of minimizing the risk factors so we are entering into matlab of optimization any problem given we want to find out whether it is going to be a linear function or a non linear function how to find out the minimum value of that so when we have it like this the matlab syntax will be f min con what is this f min con that is f is the function c o n that is going to be the constraint right and min find the minimum bound of that and if we have it as b and d we call it as bound and minimize the function f of x the objective function is min f of x subject to the constraints can be with respect to either less than or equal to or equal to or greater than or equal to and we will have the range of values should be i can give one small small example for each and everything it can be either linear constraint or it can be non linear constraint if it is going to be linear then we try to say that x plus y less than or equal to 3 hours within 3 hours i should be in a position to manufacture these two products x and y which we call it as less than or equal to x plus y greater than or equal to 100 that means it is understood x plus y both and this is going to be the constraint that is budget constraint more than 3 or labor constraint if it is going to be uh, more than 3 30 people it can be done x plus y equal to 30 it's going to be equality constraint and we can have either c of x the the constraint can be less than or equal to 0 or it can be equal to 0 or we can have it as 2 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 3 that means the range of x is lying between 2 and 3 where the lower bound and upper bound then optimization to matlab where we can see like min con this min con is like fun is my function initial value is my x not and a and b we had to frame it as a matrix it will be in terms of equations the equations have to be transformed to a matrix so if we use this f min con that is to find the minimum of the minimum constraint of the given function okay it can be either equal to or greater than or equal to or less than or equal to suppose some problems may not have equal to constraint some problem may not have a greater than or equal to constraint if that is the case in matlab we try to give it as a equal to null space and b equal to null space that means in this particular problem we don't have any equality constraint say for example 
x plus 2y plus 3z equal to 5. That is not there. Next. In the same thing, we can have a range. See, initially we started with f min con command with the function x naught is the initial, initial condition value. It may be x naught equal to 1. A comma B. A is my coefficient matrix on my left hand side and B is my right side. Okay. For example, how to convert it? I can tell you 2x plus 3y equal to 6. x plus y equal to 7. Then you transform this matrix as ax equal to b. How to have it? The coefficients of x and y, please place it in a matrix. 2, 3, 1, 1 as a 2 cross 2 matrix upon the unknown values, unknown parameters, constant that is variable x and y equal to my right hand side. What is my right hand side? Available resources. That is 6, 7. Like that we can have it. The second command is where we have included apart from fun x0, a, comma, b, a, eq, and b, eq. Equality constraints are included. The third command, the same command only, we can extend it based on the problem. So if equality, if mixture of all the constraints, we have to use all the things. So function x0, a, a coefficient matrix, b, right hand side, a, equality, b, equality, Lower bound, upper bound. What is lower bound, upper bound? 3 less than or equal to x less than or equal to. So what it is given. Then the next one is like we have it as in non-linear. What happens over here is extra is non-LCON. What is the meaning of non-LCON? It accepts the x values and returns the vectors. Vectors. I mean it. C. And this C equality. That represents all the non-linear inequality. It is not a linear inequality. It is a non-linear inequality. Say, for example, linear equality, I can say it is x plus y less than or equal to 5. Non-linear. And the equality is respectively. So, we will go slowly for each and every syntax of the commands we have it. First one, B I N T P R O G. This is when we want to solve the given problem by using binary integer programming. B stands for binary, INT stands for integer, and PROG is programming. So this is the MATLAB command we have to use to solve the binary integer programming. How does it look? The objective function is min f power t of x with respect to the variable x, such that the constraints will be less than or equal to or equal to. And one small thing will be that x is binary. x is binary means X may say, for example, an electric circuit is there. When I switch on, I give the value 1. When I switch off, I give the value 0. That is, it takes a value as Boolean 0 and 1. Next command, F min B and D. What is this? I have a very single variable function. For example, Y equal to X cube plus 2X plus 9X minus 7, like that. So what is this variable? X, X. Y is a dependent variable. X is an independent variable. So with respect to X, I want to find out the minimum value. That means it is a single variable on an interval 1 comma minus 1 comma 1. I want to find out the minimum value means we use the syntax F min B and D. That means find the minimum bound of the given function. So how the syntax goes? F min bin of First, we have to give the input, the function, input the function. Let f is equal to x power 3. We have to write it in MATLAB code perfectly. Minus 3x square like that. After giving it that function, store that function in fun. Now, use the same name in f min band as fun comma. What are the things over there? x1 and x2. It can be n number of variables also. It is not necessarily one or two. The second one is options. Options means it always tells you what type of algorithm we want to use. We've got plenty of algorithms to find out this. One sample is large scale. So if we give the, if we don't give the options, it takes the default algorithm and solve it. If we give the options, a particular algorithm is taken and it solves. And the next one is after finding the value, solving that particular problem, we try to go back to the original objective function and substitute that value. That value can be either maxima or minima in the objective function. That we call it as f val, function value. Now, the next command is exit flag. What is the meaning of this exit flag? This exit flag is an integer. 
that is a code for the reason in such a way that the solver is used over there and it is to identify whether the iterations are halted or not so when we use this exit flag it just gives yes iterations completed successful iterations the program comes to an end in numerical techniques we always use gaussidel or gauss jacobi uh, to find out or solve any system of n number of linear equations if that is the case when do we say that uh, these are the exact values or appropriate values for the when the one iteration of x y z coincides with the next iteration of x y z we try to say that iteration comes to end hence the values of x y z are like this here also same thing then the output we want to store the output also in the array that is done next mini max many of us know mini max algorithm this is like for a given function the meaning of mini max is first find the max value out of all those things in that mini has to be chosen like next one min search min search is i have one multi variable function not a single variable so many variables are involved say for example x square y plus z cube like that so and we want to find out we don't want to use derivative because if so many variables are involved then we have to go for partial differentiation so in order to remove this particular idea that is that should not be let us not find derivative we call it as a derivative free method where it is going to be unconstrained no constraints are involved and it's multivariable so we want to find out the minimum value so we use min search next f min unc and this f min unc is always to find in the multivariable the minimum of unconstrained and f se min f and this is semi infinitely constrained so sometimes we try to say that whether the derivative exists or not we always check it like and if it is going to be non linear function it is very difficult so we use this which is which consists of one objective function and less than or equal to constraint equal to constraint then we have the equation less than or equal to 0 and equal to 0 so how to solve this f solve f solve is a beautiful thing suppose we call this as um say for example a problem is given somebody is asking you to find out the critical points to find out whether the function attains maxima or minima or saddle points it's very simple we try to say that y equal to x cube minus 2 first time you differentiate dy by dx equal to 0 get the points solve that then you go to next derivative d square by by dx square check whether it is less than 0 or greater than 0 if so go back and substitute in the objective function here also we have what f solve given an equation if you equate it to 0 and it will give you the values but very very important is it will return a vector value that means x is a vector if that is the case first what we have to give to the system we have to input the function say f f u n equal to x power 3 minus 2 x square plus 6 then simply if we give f solve of f u n it is just for the results the next we enter into optimization technique of most of us would have been very much familiar with linear programming non linear programming linear programming where we try to solve either by simplex method or revised to simplex method we always teach in the class about if it is ax is less than or equal to b the available resources then we try to go in for slack variables if ax is greater than or equal to b we go for surplus variable and artificial variables so two methods over there we would have discussed one is bigam method other one is two phase method now when we use lin probe is a command it is defined as a linear programming so what is the first step we have to do is like convert the given set of equations in a matrix format then we can go for the next step of using the command directly we will see one example then is clean what is this clean is like it is going to be least squares and least squares we are not very much familiar with curved fitting problems we can fit either y equal to ax plus b or a plus bx or y equal to ax square plus bx plus c or y equal to ax power b or y equal to ab power x or y equal to ae power bx anything ae power x exponential curve 
now out of all these things we want to find out for the given data which is the best fit of all these things so what we try to do is like we try this is a kind of interpolation only or we can call it as a regression in uh, statistics so this particular thing when we want to find out which curve will be the best fit for the given data so what we are trying to do we try to find out the error the modulus of e so when we find out the error of fitting a straight line or parabola which is less error then we try to come to a conclusion yes this for this data straight line will be the best fit like that least square square fitting always help us with respect to less than or equal to then equality constraint and the range of given x then f min con min con is very very important this itself understands like it is a constraint but it is a non linear function so many variables are there so how to find out so it contains less than or equal to equal to very very important we can have a variable x less than or equal to 0 x1 less than or equal to 0 or x1 equal to 0 like that if that is the case what will happen so when we find out the unknown unknown uh, variable x y z should satisfy all the constraints then only we can go for the objective function to find the final value and all these things are vectors and at the same time we define this a as a coefficient matrix in the coefficient matrix that means the coefficients of each and every variable should be posted in terms of a matrix and these are the slowly we will just go for it because when we do a problem we'll have a uh, like we should understand like what is this like that so objective function we will have x dot as a initial point it has to be taken care and a in eq what is the meaning of this a in eq that means it is going to be linear inequality constraint b in equality is going to be the next linear inequality but it's going to be a vector and this is matrix on the left hand side right hand side it is treated as a vector so when i write 2x plus 3y let uh, say for example less than or equal to 5 this 2 coefficient 3 coefficient is treated as a matrix which is going to be row by column but on the other hand right side b is defined as a vector similarly the next two, two things are defined with respect to equality constraint and lb is a vector of the lower bound uv is a vector of the upper bound non non this is going to be non linear constraint function and solver is f min con options we can use optim set what is the meaning of optim set this optim set will help you to analyze what type of algorithm can be used whether it is going to be a simplex algorithm or a dual simplex algorithm or are you going to use any large scale algorithm or integer programming or binary programming or quadratic programming how do we store the output the output when we simply type f min con of all the things inside it returns the value of the objective function after solving the problem we will say that if we get the values of x and y unknown then go to the objective function and substitute so where it will be stored it will be stored in f val and very very important point that is a solution now exit flag already we have discussed it describes whether the iterations are over it is completed then we can extend the same thing as x f val exit flag and output output will also be stored in the array so next one lambda lambda is a kind of lagrange multiplier and this how we do why do we use this is like say for example i have one main objective function i have one constraint now i'm trying to combine this objective function and constraint so i'm including let h be the main function g be the constraint then i will do h plus lambda g why am i doing it the reason is n number of variables can be there so i will try to differentiate with respect to each and every variable and based on these variables lambda the stability factor where i can find out the value of lambda that i can call i can extend it to the stability of the system also the next one gradient then i can extend it to hessian gradient we all know right we must have studied uh, the vector calculus and hessian is like say for example i have some three variables 
x1, x2, x3. The Hessian matrix will be defined as the first element a11 will be dou square f divided by dou x square. In the diagonal 2 comma 2 dou square x by dou y square. In the diagonal dou square e f divided by dou z square. So it is a partial derivative of each and every variable which has been differentiated partially with respect to that variable of the original function. So a real function has f is defined like this. It can have constraint or without constraint. So unconstrained optimization, one example is given, minimize the given function. How many variables are there? X and Y, two variables are there. So with constraints, minimize this with respect to the set of constraint. First constraint may be X greater than zero. Second constraint, we can call it as a non-negative restrictions also. Like, what does it mean if non-negative restrictions, all the variables used in the problem should be greater than or equal to zero, should be positive. Next, minimum of the given function and another two more constraints, Minus 2 less than x less than 5. Another is y greater than or equal to 1. And one more equality constraint x plus y equal to 2. So I can have mixture of equal to less than or equal to greater than or equal to constraint. So we want to find the minimum of the given function. A graph is given to us like the range of this x and y is given. The graph can be either monotonically increasing or monotonically decreasing. How to find the minimum of the function? For that, let us have a small concept on convex, convex, concave, and convex hull. So when we talk about convex, two points which are being connected, which is lying inside the domain. And another thing is like we are going for concave, where the two points are lying inside the domain, but the connectivity of these two points, some part of the region which is lying outside, the line which is connected, convex hull. For a set of points, it may be x1, x2, x3, etc. We try to find out the minimal convex set, but it will be, it belongs to the capital X. So simplex. What is simplex? It is the convex hull of that n plus one. So either it can be a line segment, or it can be a triangle, or it can be a tetrahedron, or it can be a pentatope. That means we are trying to uh, find an n-dimensional analog of a given triangle. But it is very difficult. You know, we cannot draw it manually. Uh, n-dimension of a triangle or a prism. The visualization becomes very, very tedious. So we can use MATLAB and show wonders how the visualization plays a vital role of analyzing each and everything at a particular point, how we define. So when we keep a cursor on a particular point, it will just show us the values of or the coordinates of x, y, z. That's the greatest thing. And this is a beautiful method of Neldermead method. We call it as an NM method. It always describes how many variables are present and how many points are present. But here, if we take n to be the number of variables, n plus 1 to be the number of points. So we are trying to go into the concept of convex hull. Okay. If two variables are present and three points are there, the simplex is going to be a triangle. If three variables and four points are there, it's going to be tetra. So in this method, a very, very important point is like, you can have reflection, expansion, all these translations, we must have studied in complex analysis also. That is, um, this the main application over here is like image processing. And the same thing, you can have the image, that is this to be a reflection, to be a contra. And what is the meaning of all these things? Whether it has to be string or it is contracted or inside contraction, every time the dotted lines, what is being displayed over here is the original simplex. However, the different types of transformations are done, the original simplex can be identified. And now, Small, small hints on the commands of optimization. Lin-pro is linear programming. Quad-pro is quadratic. And for non-linear, to find out the roots or zeros of the given equation, we use F0. And to solve this non-linear system, x cube plus 2x cube y minus x square minus 7xy, like that, that non-linear system may be constrained or unconstrained. We use the command f solve and lean squares. And next one is if non-negative restrictions are there, we should not use isq. Lin, we have to use isq non-neg. 
Then minimization, already we discussed all these commands. Non-linear least squares, very, very important point is curve fitting. And the, why we are doing this is to know the bounds. Sometimes we know the upper bound, but the lower bound is very difficult to analyze it. So we can use some Lagrangian multiplier of advanced optimization technique to analyze that. The next one is minimization of, see two things are there, professors. One is single objective, another one is multi-objective. So we go in for non-linear minimization of multi-objective. Now, I just wanted to uh, inform you or uh, uh, display how the coding has been written. And what is the problem? The problem is, the problem is I have two functions x into e power minus x square. Another one is minus x into e power minus x square. Okay. What is the interval? Minus one comma one. So how to write the code for this function? Without knowing the code, I can just CLC clear all. We'll clear that. Next one. What is the variable in these two functions? Let me store the first function x into e power minus x square into some variable x1 or first function. Minus x into e power minus x square, let me store it in another function. Now, before doing these two, I have to symbolize the variable. What variable is over here? x is the variable. So, sims x. What is the need of the sims x? This sims is a command which is used to create a symbolic variable because the computer MATLAB will not understand what is x. So, we have to symbolize that. So, after symbolizing that variable, then we store the first function, x star e power, e, what is e? In MATLAB, we have to use it as exp minus x square x power 2, which should comma, you have to put this function inside single quote, comma, minus 1, comma 1 in the interval, which interval you want to find out the minimum value. And what is the syntax we have to use? f min b and d, minimum bound of the function x1. And go to the second function. What is the second function? Minus x into e power minus x square. When we use this, the difference between these two is first function is x into e power and this is minus x. So in the same way, in a single quote, let me write the function comma minus one comma one. Use the same syntax of f min b and d. Minimum bound of the given function and store it in which variable? x2. Now, after this, when we say this and run the program, we will get the values minimum of x1 and minimum of x2. But we want to visualize it. So what command we can use it is easy plot. We call it as easy plot. What is the meaning of easy plot? Easy plot. What is the meaning of that? Easy plot is it is trying to plot the given function with respect to what variable? x. And the range, when we draw a two-dimensional, the range of x and y is not known. Then this, if we give it in a default domain of minus 2 pi to plus 2 pi, it will just draw it. So when I give e is a plot of the first function, it will do it. So first graph has come out. Where it will come? It will come only in the command window. That is figure window. right? Hold on. Why am I using this hold on? This hold on is for a second, please wait. That means it retains the plots in the current axis so that new plots, I want to plot the second function, new plots will be added to the axis and please retain the first plot also. So two diagrams, I want to see this, right? I hope, uh, professors, you must have understood, right? And CLC and clear all, I have already told you, it will just clear. And when we put uh, CLC in the command window, all the things in the command window where the outputs of the previous one, everything will be deleted. Clear all space. Now, how to run the program? When we run the program, I think I have shown it to you by using the green color button. When we run it in the command window, we get the value x1, the minimum value of the first function is minus 0.7071. And the second minimum value for the second function is 0.7071. What is there in the figure window? Figure is First function is highlighted in red color and second function is highlighted in blue color. So if we don't use this easy plot, we can use plot also. When we use plot, we have to give the range of x-axis and the range of y-axis. If we use easy plot, it is understood that in the default domain, it will just do what? Okay, this is our first one. Now, 
we move on to the second problem solve min z equal to 2x1 plus 3x2 very very important point to be noted in this in ordinary theoretical uh, description whenever a problem in linear programming is solved we try to tell all our students and our colleagues and we have learnt it from our senior scientist saying that the objective function should be maximized if the objective function is minimized then we try to say that convert it into maximization by multiplying through word minus sign but in matlab the objective function should be always to the minimum so if max is given say for example max is equal to 2x1 plus 3x2 i have to convert it to min z we try to say that min of minus z equal to max z so we multiply each and every variable by minus sign so suppose max is equal to 2x1 plus 3x2 then i will convert it to min z equal to minus 2x1 minus 3x2 so what are the coefficients of x1 and x2 minus 2 comma 3 that has to be taken care now coming back here subject to the constraints four constraints are given first constraint second constraint third constraint fourth constraint and the last one is what it is going to be no negative restrictions so when such a problem is given we try to solve it by simplex method and it will go to some two pages like that where we try to come to an optimal solution when all zj minus cj is positive optimality is reached in such a way that our variables whatever the values we got it in the simplex table we take it forward if any of the variable is not present we try to say x1 is not present x1 equal to 0 x2 is present in the final table of simplex algorithm x2 equal to 15 hence the values of x1 and x2 substitute it in the objective function but here it is very simple first one as you should clear clear all and c what to see is my objective function the coefficients what are the coefficients 2 1 3 please professors make a note the objective should be minimized minimization it's not optimize minimize so what is the 2 comma 3 then a take the left hand side of all the constraints what are the coefficients minus 3 4 3 1 1 minus 2 minus 2 minus 1 as a matrix it is transformed to ax less than or equal to b what are the right hand side 0 15 5 0 so now convert this constraint into the format of ax less than or equal to b then what is a a is the coefficient matrix of the unknown x and y or x1 and x2 and what are multiplied by the unknown x1 and x2 that is right hand side now how to write it already we have discussed about this how to write the first what is the first row of the matrix minus 3 4 minus 3 4 Second, three one separated by semicolon because we are going to the next constraint. Three one. Third constraint one minus two one minus two. Fourth constraint we write it B. What is B? B is my right hand side. What is B? Zero fifteen five zero. Now this is a vector. Please note it. A is a matrix. B is a vector. Now in this vector I have four elements. each element of the right hand side b zero separated by semicolon next constraint now we have stored the entire matrix a into capital a then the right hand side of all the constraints is stored in b what command we will use we can use lin prog of cab this is very simple it will solve and it just gives the value first a since we have stored it no it will display a then b it gives a solution optimum solution found then it gives answer 1 minus 2 what is 1 and minus 2 are nothing but my values of x1 and x2 x1 equal to 1 x2 equal to minus 2 what is missing in this programming code one thing is missing because in the class we try to say that after getting the values of x1 and x2 go to the original function substitute x1 equal to 2 and x2 equal to minus 1 and get the min z that is not given in the programming code we have to include it we'll go to the next one now for practice we can make it very fast max is it now what is wrong with this max i have to convert this into min subject to three constraints are there 
and we are talking about all uh, inequality less than or equal to x1 x2 restrictions non negative restrictions and objective function with set of three constraints and one non negative restriction now what is before we enter into the matlab code what is wrong with the objective it's not wrong actually matlab understand and takes the min value of the objective function so we have to give the input as min now convert this max to min how to convert it multiply throughout by minus sign of the objective function so what happens min is equal to minus 4x1 minus 10x2 now as usual the same coding clc clear all now professors you may ask a question what will happen if clc and clear all is not given nothing will happen the old values or the old results in the command window will be there and uh, the it will be a little bit of confusion will be there so every time we try to uh, erase all the old things what has been done so that the fresh result we can find it out then what is c c is my objective function minus 4 minus 10 because we have converted the max to min then a what is the a matrix coefficient 2 1 semicolon 2 5 Semicolon two three, then B is a right hand side, which is going to be a vector. Then we simply give len P R O G of C A B. Now we got the result. A is displayed in the command window. B is I think uh, one green color button is there on the top. It is it helps you after doing writing all these things the editor window. I have to save the file. then i have to use this green color button run the program and the results will be there in the command window if you click the command window it will just show you the results and you could see on the down right side because yesterday um i started correcting all my codes so you could see time 1148 8 8 2020 it will show you when did you execute the program also that will also be there now what is the inference of the solution 0 and 20 inference is How many variables are here? Two variables, x1 and x2. What is x1? X1 I got the answer as zero. What is x2? I got the answer as twenty. What is the meaning of x1 equal to zero? That means in my manufacturing industry, I have started producing two different types of products, x1 and x2. But unfortunately, when I solve with respect to all constraints, I came to a conclusion since x1 equal to zero, I don't want to manufacture the first product x1. Carry on with my x2 so that I will get maximum profit. So when we substitute it over here, four into zero plus ten into twenty, I get the maximum value. And this problem is for minimum, correct? So minus four x1 minus ten x2. So first term is zero. Four into zero minus ten into twenty. That is minus two hundred. That is min value. What is maximum? Two hundred rupees profit I have achieved. We move on to the next one. A program how to plot the function to get an idea where it is minimized in unconstrained optimization. What is the meaning of unconstrained optimization? Already we have seen it. There are no constraints, and it can be either linear or it can be non-linear. Now we have taken a problem x into e power. See the complication, complicated uh, function x into e power minus x square minus y square plus x square plus y square divided by twenty. What is this e power? Exponential exp. So very very important point is as usual CLC clear all. And what are the variables it has been used over here like x and y. Both x and y we have to create a symbolic variable. That is why we have initialized it as since x comma y. Okay. And one more thing you could see like at the rate of x comma y. That means for each and every value of x. When we substitute it in y, that is the function, we get another y. So at every value of x comma y, in the default domain of minus two pi to plus two pi, please evaluate this function and plot it in the graph. That's the idea. So one more important point to be noted: x into e power. It is given x into e power. What is the meaning of this dot? Why should I put dot? What is the meaning? This means. Simply, I can write now x into e power minus x square. See, near x I have put one dot. Near y also I have put one dot. What is the meaning? This dot means it is element-wise operations. What is that? Element-wise operations that apply to each and every element, either to the pair of vectors or arrays. Sometimes, no. In discrete maths, also we say dot product one dot one. 
two dot two like that. Here, if it is done like this, each and every element is taken care in such a way that it will be evaluated as per the function for the given x. Y is generated, and easy serve. What is it? This looks like easy plot where this easy serve it plots. The two variable symbolic expression, two variable symbolic. It is what are the variables x and y in which domain minus two pi to plus two pi. And what does this function represents? It's a kind of string that represents a ma mathematical expression. And I can have the range instead of minus two pi to plus two pi as minus two to plus two also in the two dimensional graph. If that is the case, then e of what is the meaning of e of e of in that contour. Go to the function, draw it in the interval minus two to. If I don't give this minus two comma two as an interval, the domain for x and y, it is understood that it takes automatic default domain as minus two pi to plus two pi. See the graph. And when we use this graph, and uh, when we just there is one button on the top, rotate. When we rotate it and click it inside this, then it will display the coordinates of x y z. that is the beauty of this and this what is this this looks like level of curves what is level of curves it is contour integration so we are able to analyze a given non linear function with respect to exponential and the points can be at time at which point its maxima or minima so that i can help the manufacturing industry or production industry so in the particular place we'll be in a position to identify the coordinates next we move on to the next one lpp with mixture of all constraints so far we have seen different things now it can be either less than or equal to or equal to or greater than or equal to or a lower bound or an upper bound let us see so what are the basic variables which we have to store the things is Coefficient vector of the objective C, matrix of inequality A, the right hand side of the inequality constraint, then B, then we have this L B U B. L B is defined as the lower bound, and U B is going to be the upper bound. If there are no upper bounds, no lower bounds, no equality, then we can have an empty set. That will make us to understand that particular problem doesn't have x naught is very very important to execute any type of algo algorithm in optimization technique. We have to give the initial value like Fourier or Laplace transforms. We try to give the boundary conditions x naught equal to two, y naught equal to three, like that here. And if we don't have any boundary condition, please give it as a empty box. Then options options always will make you to find out what type of algorithm can be used. Then f value will just store the these things we have already checked it okay and now we will go for the program that is this is already discussed by me so let me explain what are the input arguments and how can so now i have been given one unconstrained the same problem like this now the function is like this and i have two things one is x of 1 and x of 2 which x not to be minus 0.5 and uh, the next value is y that is for x comma y it is x1 and x2 what is the idea over here is we have to use this f min okay and what type of algorithm a large scale algorithm can be used and are we in a position to find out the gradient or not that is the idea so when we find out this when we use this we could see that how many iterations it is going so this already i have discussed the options we have to set the options and the functional value can be stored in this right now when we run this program you could see like the number of iterations will be given the function count will be given at each and every count what is the function value and what is the step size whether optimality is reached or not so it itself will give you local minimum is found the stopping criteria is given And what are the values of x1 and x2? X1 is minus 0.6691, and x2 is zero. And what is u and c f? The value of the objective function. Since we have discussed all these things in the previous thing, I am just moving out. Now, the same thing. I want to visualize it. How to visualize this? That means the constraint. I have one function f. I have another function g. 
these two functions are there the constraint set is the interior of a titled ellipse that means how the contours are done say for example let me store the first function f in some f at the rate of x comma y and what is this dot already it has been explained to me explained by me it is element wise operations right so store the first function what is the first function x into e power minus x square minus y square plus x square plus y square by 20 what is the second function g x y by 2 plus x plus 2 the whole square plus y minus 2 the whole square divided by 2 it is one small mistake is there i'll rectify so when we use this f and g we have it as e z plot already i have explained the e z plot hold on that means wait for some time then contour level of curves then plot with respect to this legend what is the meaning of legend legend means uh, in excel sheet also when we draw a graph we try to give the title of the graph x axis 1 cm equal 1 like that we give the legend that it is going to be constraint f contours and minimum we give all the values to you and when we run this program Huh? Just one minute, one minute. So, when we do this, a contour graph is drawn over here, and in this contour, we could see that all the straight lines in blue color will show as a constraint, and this blue color with yellow color, it is F contours and prefaces. A small red color dot is here. That red color. will make us to identify the minimum value of the given function because two things are combined over here this is one part and uh, before ending it i'll just uh, use one more thing also like and uh, this solving is by linear programming already we have done it uh, this is also done by us one more i just want to show you this this is going to be a linear programming where equal to constraint is there less than or equal to is there then these are all separate which is defined as a lower bound and upper bound so one objective function then please collect the less than or equal to separately equal to constraint separately greater than or equal to separately then the lower bound separately upper bound separately so when we have it f f is why did i put minus sign because it is max what are the coefficients 4 2 3 i store it as a vector a a is a coefficient matrix is a coefficient of only less than or equal to i take only less than or equal to first two constraint what is the right hand side 1 and 2 then what is equality constraint now i take sorry i take the equality constraint only one equality constraint one row vector 1 1 1 on the right hand side 1 so i store it as a e q and b e q what is the lower bound i have all the values to be zero and what what are the upper upper bound values 1 1 2 so first a given problem has to be converted into a matlab format then only we'll be able to use this lint so f we can use this uh, clear clc clear all f is objective function a is a coefficient matrix b is the right hand side for the less than or equal to first a and b are my less than or equal to constraint input equality a e q b e q lower bound upper bound then i can give lint prog of f all the things if i give it then i will get the output as optimization terminated successfully so what is the value of this 0.500 x1 equal to 0.5 x2 equal to 0 and x3 equal to 0.5 now suppose professors if i don't have a lower bound in a given problem then i should give l is equal to empty set then i will get the values of x y z suppose where we don't have the equality constraint then we give a equality and b equality then the optimization terminated successfully similarly i'm just running a program i have just info um explained about how so many constraints i can have first step is consider all the things this line after that line 10 15 is my b 5 7 8 like that please try to have it as a matrix form then when we give the input all these things how to enter a matrix already it has been discussed and we have to think f print f is to it's like a print statement where the algorithm what type of algorithm is used and all these are extra enter press 
then large scale is a type of the algorithm and when we run this particular program we want to know whether it is converged or not that is the important point sometimes when we do research people will ask like what is the complexity of the algorithm so convergence plays a vital role in optimization so when we do it the optimal solution is found x solution is all so many variables were present then f value what is f value in go to the objective function substitute all these values and exit flag that means it has come to one i that is the iteration has been completed successfully what type of algorithm we have used dual simplex algorithm so in unconstrained optimization also the same way but we use one inline command what is that inline command inline command always helps you create a function of array with number of variables giving a string contained followed by series right so only two more things i'll just wind it up one is quadratic programming and very very important point in quadratic programming is such a complicated problem first step is frame a matrix of q what is q 2 represents okay these are the that is we had to find the hessian matrix okay so if we are able to find out this q q a and all these things then as usual we can have the same kind of programming and when we do it the algorithm what i have used is interior point convex algorithm and the final one is i just wanted to touch the final one the final one is lagrangian and when i solve this particular problem which i have told you like it just gives me an graph visualization like this and i could get the hessian matrix that is jacobian matrix i can extend this to hessian matrix also so the last concept is like i want to view it in terms of a nonlinear function with grids also and i can set some colors and rotate the figure for the better view this is also possible this is just a picture a contour integration picture and the last concept is lagrange one main function will be given subject to constraints we try to combine the main function plus lambda times of second constraint then the necessary and sufficient condition is we have to partially differentiate with respect to each and every variable along with lambda and when we do it like this theoretically the matlab will be initialize it give the input of the function then the constraint now what is the command we have to use diff differentiate the first function with respect to what variable x1 i call this as gradient then differentiate second function with respect to x2 now gradient 1 will contains the differentiated values of the first function gradient 2 will contains the differentiation of the second thing now i can just multiply this and store it in f so when and when i just find out the lambda do f divided by do lambda that is also stored in this and the solution for the entire thing is given what at what values this function attains the optimization value and lambda is very much important and the first one column represents x1 second one is x2 third one is lambda and the fourth one is the functional value of the objective thank you professors ma'am thank you so much ma'am that was an awesome presentation from your side uh, actually when we look into that uh, most of us uh, we take optimization as a separate topic and matlab as a separate topic but you were able to merge these two topics so well and explain it ma'am thank you so much and uh, looking at the participants the feedback uh, i believe that they had also uh, uh, enjoyed the session and uh, that was really great from your side ma'am thank you so much and ma'am uh, shall we go for the Q and A sessions, ma'am. Uh, some of the questions uh, yeah, are please, there. Ma please, ma'am. Ma yeah, we'll just look into that. And uh, I wish to say only one statement. I once again extend my humble thanks to the higher authorities, principal and uh, HOD, ma'am, uh, Dr. Maheshwari and uh, uh, Dr. Anita, and special thanks to Maheshwari, ma'am, for giving me an opportunity to share some of my ideas and views with respect to MATLAB. And this is a wonderful platform to solve any type of problem. thank you very much ma'am and let me thank almighty for giving me enough strength and without any disturbances and a wonderful congrats and applause to mageshi ma'am for 
organizing such a beautiful workshop during this pandemic situation thank you ma'am and thank you so much i am also privileged to have you here ma'am because uh, quite a long time i've been uh, looking for you and finally i got you so that was great from your side also ma'am thank you so much uh, going back to the q and a questions uh, uh one of the questions uh, there are some few questions we'll just go for one or two questions ma'am uh, ma'am when we solve the lpp in the case of maximum we use a line uh, lin probe uh, that is l i n p r o g command if we have a min uh, case problem can we convert to max or use the same command it's enough for getting min problem is it correct to uh, solve this kind of a min yes, problem yes ma'am i understood professors uh, either uh, i could see like uh, my scholar like anita who used to she used to use like tora or lingo like that so uh, see programming code is very very important and when we use it as a simulation tool or a toolbox we will get the answer but if you write a code and when we write a code any type of modifications can be done based on the current scenario first point second point is the same command will not help you hello ma'am uh, ma'am one more question um uh, is matlab uh, i mean does matlab give more accuracy than the uh, other softwares and consumes less time and if so what are the important points that is to be considered when we solve mathematical problems using matlab uh very good i i will just try to answer to this question one is like um it will give an accurate answer instead i can say that the optimality will be achieved what is the meaning of optimality is the number of iterations the number of iterations when i use some other software or simulation tool or anything toolbox whatever it may be like for me the algorithm when i executed and run it it took just 0.02 seconds to solve this and throw me the result so time is very much important at the same time we always try to say that is the algorithm convergent so this algorithm is convergent or in matlab is it's with respect to the time as well as with respect to the number of iterations and the complexity of the algorithm also uh, takes a nice picture over here yes ma'am Um, thank you once again on behalf of Kumaruru Institutions. Ma Thanks, ma'am. Ma yes, ma'am. Ma please, please. Uh, is it possible to solve fuzzy optimization through MATLAB? Exactly. Okay. I think my scholar has done this. MATLAB is on one side, fuzzy is on another side. So we try to create the linguistic variables and Chris numbers, everything like, and those values are being posted in the main objective function, and it can be done. The second point is like. Uh, one more scholar has done it lagrangian and it is my extension of my uh, research also the lagrangian means like a very big problem is divided it's like piece wise continuous that is a large interval is divided into so many sub intervals and each sub interval the function is continuous like that it is decomposed in many sub problems and by relaxing the constraints we will be able to get the answer or the objective value for the original problem then uh, uh, one more one more minute ma'am and um, I think uh, anything else, ma'am? I think uh, other things are the general ones, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. And ma'am, one more thing. LPP does not satisfy the non-negative restrict condition. Why? Uh, shall I just answer to this, ma'am? Yeah, yeah, please, ma'am. Uh, see, non-negative restriction is always it's a it plays a vital role. That means, like, we what are the variables we use it over here? That x and y, it should be positive. Suppose if I have a problem, min is that equal to 2x1 plus 4x2 minus 5180. Some values there, okay. Subject to set of constraints along with non-negative restrictions, where x1, x2 are positive. Assuming that x1 and x2 are positive, we just design a matrix of a x on the left-hand side and b as a vector. It is understood that it satisfies the non-negative restrictions. At the same time. when we solve this we don't consider this minus 5180 we take only 2x1 plus 3x2 and solve it we get the answer after getting the functional value we try to subtract this minus 5180 okay ma'am 
Okay, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. And uh, actually, I know that you've got many things to share from your side, but uh, due to time constraint, we are uh, just moving on a little fast. I'm uh, uh, anyways, thank, uh, thankful for that also, ma'am. And uh, on behalf of Kumaraguri Institutions, ma'am, we thank you so much uh, for spending your time and in instilling our minds, the techniques of optimization and the MATLAB programming. And uh, all of us had a very useful session and we enjoyed the process of learning, ma'am. It was actually a pleasure to have you on such a wonderful uh, STTP. And uh, we had a very thorough insight on uh, the uh, specific domains, uh, like what you said was uh, optimization, MATLAB programming. And once again, ma'am, thank you so much for taking uh, time and answering each of the questions that was uh, uh, put forward to you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your kind gesture and uh, hope to coordinate with you in our near future, ma'am. Thank you so sure, much. Sure, ma'am. Sure, sure. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank you so much. Thank you, so much. Stay yeah. blessed. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. And okay. yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. And I also thank all the active participants. You participants had really uh, uh, actively participated in this uh, particular uh, first day program. And uh, all of you, thank you once again. Uh, I request all the participants kindly uh, put in your feedback links and um, then uh, log out the sessions. And uh, uh, yeah, so uh, we'll have our next uh, tomorrow's uh, session at, uh, at the same time at two o'clock. Uh, till, then, till then, it is Maheshwari signing off from Kumurgur Institution. Thank, thank you. you thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much.